So now I'm going to go right into this high key effect. And for that, I'm going to take my contrast all the way up, 100%. Something I would never do to a regular photograph. On black and white, I can get away with it. If we were in full color, you'd see anytime you increase contrast, you increase saturation by definition. So it ain't pretty. Okay? So black and white is going to help us with that. So contrast all the way up. Highlights all the way down. That's telling Lightroom or Adobe Camera Raw, I want all the detail possible in this file. I want everything. Okay? In other words, I'm not giving you permission to blow it out. But maybe I will. Shadows all the way up. I want all the shadow detail in the pile. I'm getting totally greedy. I'm tearing this image apart six ways to Sunday. But because it's Lightroom or Adobe Camera Raw, I can get away with it. And now I can do the whites and blacks to taste. But before I do whites and blacks to taste, so so far all I have is contrast 100%, highlights minus 100%, shadows plus 100%. And now I'm going to do clarity. And clarity, like we said before, normally you would never do that, especially to a portrait of a, of a woman. But in this case, I can come up here and increase the clarity to it, even on a, a female portrait, especially now that I'm going to take that up to 100% just for teaching purposes. You can see that with all that, I still have my full dynamic range here, and I can turn on my clipping. I've got no clipping whatsoever going on with this file, even though I've exaggerated the tonality that much. And now I'm going to go into the whites and kind of shape where I want my detail. Okay? How much do I want to blow out that detail? So this is where it's going to be to taste. And I can even come up here and say, you know, I don't need that much highlight detail. And I'm going to come up here and I'm going to exaggerate it. So this is a very, very dramatic, harsh image. This is a harsh rock star, don't mess with me, I could kick your ass kind of thing, right? And with that, I'm going to come over here and use my little, you know, snapshots and start. There's my don't mess with me look. Now that same thing, since I've got this exaggerated contrast and tone in the file, I can also take out my clarity in ways that I wouldn't have before, possibly. Let's go ahead and take my thing down. And I could get away with an even softer look than I would normally get uh, or want. That watercolor look, because of the um, contrast that I've used on the file, is not getting watercolor. It's a very, very soft look, um, glowing look here. And I could, again, save that as a, another look to it. In concert with this, I may take advantage of that vignetting process, which we didn't start off by doing that little vignette, could have. So let's go ahead. We'll go ahead and use our post crop vignette, since I've bad mouthed it in comparison to other ones. Okay, so I'm going to come in here, and I can either um, darken that outside, okay, increasing the feather, so I'm getting a, um, a still somewhat subtle um, vignette to it. Or if I want to, I know it's got a bad reputation, I can come over here and add a um, lightened vignette where I'm going to blow out the edges of the file. Okay, so for a very, very light look. So that again is two completely different looks. One, if I take that vignette down and darken everything up where her, her face and her eyes are showcased, then I've got that look. Let's just go ahead and we'll do one up, we'll do one down. I think I'll go back up and go back to that um, my uh, main basic tab. And I played around with that white. So let's take those blacks now down. And again, you can see how I can shape the dynamic range of the image with fine tuning that black point. I mentioned that yesterday. That's why I have that white and black point in there, especially when you're doing special effects because of this ability to you get carried away with these things and then you can reshape it to get a full dynamic range in the file. So again, I like that. Another look right here. The HSL that we're we taking our advantage of over here. Let's hold that so we can see a little bit more. So our HSL. Also, especially when it comes to high key, especially we've got a young uh, lady with freckles here, um, <clears throat> we can add this to the mix because, as you know, in luminosity with our TAT tool, we can come up here and lighten just the skin tone of the model as opposed to the background or anything else. And if we want to, let's go ahead and uh, zoom up here a little bit. 
we've got, again, a little bit of a, a freckle situation going on here. We cannot do the main skin, but we can just take up the reds, okay? We can brighten up the reds. Actually, that's probably fitting into the oranges more than anything else. So I can fine tune this to kind of minimize the uh, uh, freckles on the model. Okay. So again, this is kind of a ghostly. That's what am I thinking? Okay. A little, little too much. I'm going really high key <coughs> on here, but you get the effect. I'm, I'm totally exaggerating it for what we're looking at. But what we're seeing here <coughs> is um, a complete control of the dynamic range of the image. Um, through simple sliders with no filtering going on. Okay. We'll do one more here. And <clears throat> let's go back to that basic panel. We're taking down our clarity. Let's, now that we've blown out a lot of our skin detail, let's take it back up. So another one of those don't mess with me looks, and you get the idea.